So when you do check out the place, ask them to give you a tour or ask them if you can just check it out for yourself. That's completely fine. Just make sure to check if they have the machines that you desire. Hey, what's up guys? Let's be healthier each and every day. It's Jay here at Make Your Lifestyle Lab Korea. Today's video is for all foreigners currently who are living in or planning to live in Korea in coming months. Today's video is short guidelines for foreigners on how to sign up to a Korean gym, what street signs to look for, what to expect at a Korean gym, and main differences you expected to see compared to the gyms in the States. And of course, obviously there's a pandemic of COVID-19, so this video will be applied upon the cessation of COVID-19 when social distancing is no longer asked of us. First, I know exactly how it feels to be in a completely different environment, especially in a different country with different language. I know how it feels to be homesick, and I know the difficulties of adjusting to a new culture. And there are many ways we can go about it, but in this day and age, your pursuit of fitness should not be a problem, especially if you are an avid gym goer. So if you're currently residing in Korea or planning to move to Korea in coming months, these are the tips on how to sign up to a Korean gym. Number one, street signs. Now, these are the words that typically indicate a gym. Now, these are your normal weight training gyms. And although there are some variations like CrossFit or Pilates based or martial arts based gyms, but these are just weight training gyms. And those variations will have some form of related picture like CrossFit or martial arts in front of the gym's name. Don't be shy. Just go in and check out their operating hours. And they may not employ someone who speaks fluent English, but it's not that hard to find out their opening hours. And typically Korean gyms are not. 24 hours. There are a few, but very rare. Normally, Korean gyms are open from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. on weekdays and 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekends. And the weekend hours may vary from location to location, and some gyms even close on Sundays or national holidays. Number two, typically on the street signs or billboards, next to the gym's name, you would see a number which indicates your monthly fee. Now, these are the fees that you would normally pay if you pay six months months or years membership fees in advance or sometimes it indicates the monthly fee you would pay if you sign up for 10, 20 personal training sessions. So when you do walk in and ask for the monthly fee, it might be more expensive than you would expect it. But the Korean gym membership fees are pretty straightforward compared to the US. The US where the, some gyms require to pay the first and last month first and the third month will be off or half off. Those sort of deals don't exist here. It's pretty straightforward. You just pay the monthly fee. Now, these fees you can pay in advance in the increments of three months, meaning three, six, nine, 12 months membership fees. If you pay it in advance, the monthly fees will decrease. I usually sign up for three months at a time simply because it does lower the monthly fees a bit. And I might jump from one gym to another when the membership expires. Or I might have dual membership fees because all gyms have different equipments, which I'll get to in number three. Now you might think you don't speak a word of Korean, but how are you going to sign up for a Korean gym? Just ask your friend or coworker and anyone at the gym. You may not be able to communicate 100% fully, but understanding the fact that you want to sign up to a gym and how much they will charge you for it. They can't overcharge you because they have a price sheet right in front of them. So it won't be too difficult. Now, number three, all Korean gyms have different types of machines, barbells, and dumbbell series. And I'm not only talking about the variety or the sheer numbers of the machines, but the manufacturers and brands of the machines. Typically in the States, you would see hammer strength, life fitness, and hoist as machines, and iron grip and Ivanka weights for dumbbells and free weights. But in Korean gyms, you would see different machines and dumbbells at each gym. So when you do check out the place, ask them to give you a tour or ask them if you can just check it out for yourself. That's completely fine. Just make sure to check if they have the machines that you desire. Meaning some gyms that I go to have hamstring machines, but they don't have all the variations. Some gyms may only have seated leg curls. Some gyms may only have lying leg curls. Some gyms may have both lying and seated. So 
All gyms are different. So make sure to check out the place before you sign up to see if they have the machines or dumbbells that you want. And if you are into heavy lifting, most Korean gyms dumbbells only go up to about 35 kilos, which is about 77 pounds. Some gyms do go up higher, but they're very rare. For instance, the gym that I currently go to is because they have dumbbells that go up to 40 kilos, which is about 90 pounds. That's pretty much in the heavy end of dumbbell series in Korea. So if you'd like to lift heavy, but the gym that you'd like to sign up for doesn't have heavy dumbbells, then you might have to just switch on to barbells or Smith machines. And also one thing to keep in mind that all the machines that you would normally see are international versions. Some gyms do import machines straight from the States, but they're more than likely to be international version, meaning they have shorter grips or smaller grips. Uh, the machines are not as wide as you're used to or not as heavy as you you're used to. It's basically custom fitted for Asian size. So it's just something that you just have to get used to it. But as long as you know the mechanics and how to utilize machines and free weights, it shouldn't be a big of a problem. Now, the bigger the gym is or the more expensive the monthly fee is, they're likely to have more varieties or numbers of machines or heavier poundages and dumbbells. So keep that in mind. Number four, when you do sign up for a gym, the next day or the day after, they might call you to give you an orientation. They call it the OT. It's basically a free training session. If you don't want it, you can decline it respectfully. It's not mandatory. But if you'd like a free coaching and tour, then by all means, go ahead. At the end of the session, they might ask you if you're interested in getting personal training sessions. And again, this is not mandatory. If you're into it, go ahead. You could get it at a later time. So that's totally up to you. And even if you don't speak a word of Korean or if the trainer doesn't speak English that well, you know, showing you how to use certain machines don't require English that much, so go on ahead. Number five, when you do go to the gym, don't be surprised by the people wearing all the same clothes. Many Korean gyms provide you with community clothes and towels. And currently these days, I know they don't due to coronavirus, but usually they do. And it's usually one person to one towel. And the towel they give you is not the big bath towel, it's just regular hand towel size and it's perfectly fine to wear your own stuff and bring your own towel but if you do decide to borrow their clothes make sure to pick out the size that you fit well they have different sizes from extra small all the way to extra large some gyms even have extra extra large so if they do have your size but don't have clothes in the rack is probably being folded or being dried in the back so ask one of the employees to give it to you and if you sweat a lot or if you'd like an extra towel just ask them for it. it's not a big deal just make sure to return it when you're done and number six now i already know that some of you are already uncomfortable with nudity in changing room or locker room but being in asian culture you are more than likely to see people naked in the locker room this is primarily because of the public sauna culture that we have in asia is but it's something that you need Need to be expecting when you do go in everyone will be in all natural and most of the gyms do have a small hot tub in the shower room so go ahead and use it if you're into it but just remember everyone will be naked now lastly number seven obviously the gym manners are still the same here than in the states don't walk in front of people during their sets don't get too close to someone who's also working out respect the personal space no hoarding multiple benches, dumbbells, or machines at a time, and no watching cartoons or YouTube in between sets. Just be smart about it and you will be fine. And if you do see someone causing trouble, just ask one of the employees or trainers to help you. They'll gladly help you out. And remember, always re-wrap after you're done. And most Korean gyms don't have the wiping spray and the wiping towel. So make sure to lay down the towel on the bench or the machine where your body or your sweaty clothes are likely to touch. Just to keep in mind, guys. So that's it for today on how to sign up to a Korean gym and what to expect at Korean gym. And I know the half fear and half excitement that you feel when you start a new life in a new city or new country but exercising and continuing your fitness routine will help you get adjusted physically and mentally so keep your fitness in check and if you're looking for an english speaking certified personal trainer in korea send me an email hit me up i'll reply back to you as soon as i can and we'll work something out and i know everyone is having a difficult time due to the pandemic worldwide and my thoughts and prayers and for everyone stay safe guys and peace be with you thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time